Blades Glacier is what's called a marine ice sheet, part of a marine ice sheet, the Western Arctic ice sheet. And what's significant, what's important about them, about marine ice sheets, is that they, uh, that the ice kind of sits in a deep bowl where the interior of the glacier is deeper than the margin of the glacier, where the margin is, is near the ocean. And those glaciers have been shown theoretically in models to be uh, what's called unstable in the sense that once they once they start to uh, thin and move back into the, into the interior of that bowl, that process can can go very very fast in models. Now we haven't actually observed that because very few glaciers are like that, but Thwaites is one of them. And Thwaites is massive. It is enormous. It's the size of the state of Florida. It's a chunk of the of UK. And so the amount of ice that is in Thwaites could raise sea level um, by a uh, meter to a couple of meters, depending on, on uh, uh, how fast it goes and, and how, how far into the interior the effect goes. That's why Thwaites is important. Uh, why now? It hasn't started to retreat yet. Uh, according to some, some uh, researchers, it's right at the edge of that. It's just at the beginning of that process. Uh, and so if we can understand the, the possibility or the, the probability of weights contributing to sea level, then planners, uh, coastal planners can take that into account. If we can say, it doesn't matter, weights is not going to contribute, then that's an important piece of information. If we say, weights is going to contribute and it might be as much as a meter over the next century, then that's a piece of information that the coastal planners can take into account. Um, whether there's anything we can do to avoid or prevent uh, the retreat of, of Thwaites, that's a much harder question and, and one that uh, I suspect is going to require a global response for reducing CO2. Uh, and perhaps this uh, would be an impetus to bring the international community together to do something about it. Yeah, so my project is called a ghost, the geophysical habitat of subglacial thwaites, and that's the critical word is subglacial. Uh, glaciers uh, slide over their bed, uh, fast flowing ones do. Um, more ones that flow more slowly uh, don't slide, they actually deform. They, 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 uh, uh, but the ones that, that, that slide over their bed, the properties of that bed are incredibly important to how fast the glacier slides and and uh, how fast it can change over time and we don't understand that we don't know what that bed looks like in sufficient detail for people who build computer models to incorporate the bed into their models at sufficient detail so when they run their models they guess, if you will, at what the bed looks like, how, how rough it is, how bumpy it is, how soft it is, how smooth it is, things like that. And they make those guesses and then they run their models. Well, if their guesses are wrong, then their models are going to be off. We hope to provide details on what that bed looks like, both in its shape and in its properties. Is it hard or is it soft? Is it rocky? Is it bumpy? Things like that. Once we have that information, then the modelers can uh, tune their models more effectively and give more accurate numbers. Now, I've been to Thwaites uh, three times now. Um, it, it, the, the Western Arctic Ice Sheet in general is a remarkable place. It's like no place on Earth. Uh, the vistas are unbelievable. You're standing up on top of the ice sheet and there is no horizon, in either the, or the horizon is all you see in every direction. And that's even more so on Thwaites Glacier because uh, there are no stations there, there's no camps there. So when we've driven out there in our vehicles, you know, the four of uh, myself and my students, we drove out there one year. There's nothing for 200 miles in any direction. And, and obviously there is both the physical isolation and the psychological isolation. This is the most remote that you could get in, in that part of the world. Uh, and you're like, huh, there's nobody around. Uh, but anyways, so it, both of those things kind of go through your mind. Uh, it is perfectly flat, it is smooth. There are huge uh, sort of swales of, of ice. It do, it's not perfectly flat, it, it goes up and down on, on a uh, sort of uh, uh, enormous scale. And so you can't even tell 
as you're driving along, and then suddenly you'll see that the horizon is rising and dropping. And it's a, it's a remarkable place. It's very hard to describe, and I haven't done a very good job. But. Uh, really, I want two things out of this. One is, um, can we say with some certainty that uh, the underside of Thwaites is uh, smooth in these places and rough in those places? Now, that might seem technical, but I think most people can, can engage with that. They, it, it, it's a hidden area, and they, we just want a map of what, what it looks like. That would be the first thing. I think that would be critically important for a lot of people, uh, models in particular. And the second piece is the overall number. How likely is Swedes Glacier to contribute to sea level rise over the next century? That's a, in a, in a sense, that's a policy level number that's going to come out of all the projects together, uh, not just ours. But ours is, a, I think, a very significant piece of the uh, of the puzzle. Without our piece. I think we would still have trouble grappling with that ultimate number.